Today on the Cool Stuff Guys Like channel, we're out at E.H. Schwab in Turtle Creek, Pennsylvania, and we're running a 6,000 watt fiber laser to cut stainless steel plate. So the parts we're cutting today are these little um, stainless steel brackets for smartwinemaking.com. And what these do is snap onto a spout like you'd have at a restaurant for a um, beer tap system and allow you to have a spring return on certain taps like these flow control taps that otherwise um, couldn't have an internal spring return. So. How many watts are you using to um, cut versus etch? Because on this little part, we've got, you know, obviously it's cut, but it's also got the website etched in it and the made in the USA etched cool. in it. So for, for cutting, we're using 5,500 watts. Yep. And for etching, we're using 850 watts. Okay. So. And this part is, um, is this, 20 gauge? Yeah, 20 gauge stainless yep. steel. And then how thick can you cut up to? Uh, about an inch and an eighth on stainless steel. Okay. So that would be my maximum. And uh, can you cut um, Can you cut most metals with this? I'm trying to think of anything that would stand out. Most of your, your typical, you know, your, your steels, stainless steels, aluminum, brass, copper, uh, we do some Monel, mm -hmm. Inconel. Okay. Um, you know, some of your super alloys, we've, we've cut them. They seem to cut pretty good. All right, and then? The fiber technology is good for reflective metals because there is not a system of mirrors like you would have on a CO2 laser. Okay. So the beam is delivered directly to the cutting head by fiber optic cable which is why it's called a fiber laser. I see. And for us cutting a lot of aluminum and red metal, that was important to not have that reflectivity problem. Yep. We'll occasionally have to scuff up material a little bit, but yeah. in general, it, it cuts well right away. Yeah, I mean, the edge on this is really smooth. It's like it's punched or something. Right. Well, actually, no. Uh, if it were punched, it would have a much bigger, it would have a sharper edge to it. Okay. From the die. So it's actually even better, really. Yeah, that's that's better than a punch part. So how does the cost of the finished part compare? Like if you got a um, punching tool made for this versus if you decided to cut it on the laser. Yeah, the punch part should be cheaper, but uh -huh. the tooling is... Expensive. Thousands of dollars, whereas there is no tooling yep. to make this. So if you're making like a hundred thousand of these things maybe you want to get a punch tool or two but if you're making a thousand of them you're never gonna beat right. the laser we have a few customers that we do four to five thousand parts for them on the laser we don't see much beyond that yep so you mentioned earlier i was looking at these and wondering why they weren't just like falling all over the place when the laser was uh finished with them right there's a uh, a small micro tab yeah. Whenever I pierce the material, cut the perimeter, and when it stops, it actually stops short by okay. about 15 thousandths of an inch. And it leaves that little bridge of material so the part doesn't just fall through the sheet. Okay. That way when we're done, they're all still hanging on and they're a lot easier to retrieve. Yep, and I can tell you're able to pretty much hide the tab, you know, on these parts pretty good yeah it, it works very well yeah um, very rare is there a, a time where I have to change that size yeah because it's, it's given me an issue normally the sizes we have predetermined work well and they just break right off okay you might have just a little tiny nub you could barely feel it and then one thing you mentioned that I was Looking at how fast this thing is just flying. Yeah. How fast is it going? When I when it cuts, it's 45,000 millimeters a minute. Wow. Is, is the feed rate. And that's how fast we're going right now. Will, will it go even faster than that? 
-hmm. Like for I'm something really no. thin? You know, we, well, this is pretty thin for us. Okay. Uh, from here, we typically go thicker. Yep. Uh, when you go thicker, you do slow down your feed rates. Oh, I see. Yeah, this is really fast. <laughs> and then what are some of the things you, uh, you need to watch out for when you're running the laser? Just things that could go wrong that you want to keep an eye out. Oh, at, at this point, this far into the program, the only thing we really have to be concerned with are any of the parts tipping. Uh, and they'll tip because of the, the gas pressure coming out of the nozzle. Mm -hmm. If if the that bridge, that uh, micro bridge isn't big enough, yep. uh, it'll twist the part, the gas pressure will twist the part, and then it'll be sticking up out of the sheet on an angle or straight up. And the, the laser, the head of the laser can bump into it. I see. And this is a very small part, so it wouldn't hurt the laser, but it could move the sheet. If you're yep. cutting bigger parts and something tips up, you could damage the laser. Okay. So you you have to keep an eye on it. And there are parts that are big enough, heavy enough. You run yeah. them enough times, you know, it has, a, uh, I'll say, a good history where yep. you feel safe, you know, going and doing something else. Ray knows his stuff. He does. <laughs> I'm glad the dimensions worked out good. I tried to like do a lot of measurements and test them, but I didn't know if like the width of the laser is gonna cause trouble or something, no. you know? No, I, I can actually control that. Like the holes, oh, the little holes, Yep. If, if they were a little small or a little big, uh -huh. I can go in there and it's changed the offset of that. Oh, okay. Whenever I, when I program on the computer, that's one of the things you do is you, you tell it which side of the line you want the cut on. The beam is about seven thousandths of an inch wide. Okay. So it takes that into consideration. I see. You know, seven thousandths of an inch. Yeah. Okay. So as far as repeatability, you know, we could cut something within a couple thousandths of an inch over and over and over again. Wow. So. All right. So if I wanted to buy a. 6,000 watt fiber laser. Right. How much money am I talking here? <laughs> yeah, you gotta ask that guy that one. <laughs> We're talking like tens of thousands of dollars, I'm assuming, maybe more. <laughs> oh, hundreds of yeah, thousands. Yeah. thousands. <laughs> yeah, on the high end of hundreds of thousands. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what adds to it as well is we had to get an external nitrogen tank. Oh, okay. We had to move the welding department that was in this space to another location yep. the shop. It installed a jib crane with some concrete work. So, so you want to keep it busy. Yeah. <laughs> cool. But it's been a great machine for us. Hey, well, thanks for uh, teaching me all about your fiber laser. Maybe some other time we'll come out and talk about some metal spinning or something while we're out okay. here in town. Yeah, sounds great. All right. Thanks for watching, guys.